Hello, this is Joshua Patel back again with another biology video. Today we're going to be doing chapter 15, which is all about the biosphere. And we're going to start on 50.1, which is life in the Earth system. So a key concept is the biosphere is one of Earth's four interconnected systems. And as we, we should know, the biosphere is basically everything on Earth that's living. And we have four major spheres. So the biosphere is the portion of Earth that is inhabited by life. The biosphere includes all ecosystems and it's one of Earth's systems. So we have the biosphere and it includes the biota and the biota is just all living things in the biosphere. So anything living is in the biota, which is in the biosphere. There are three other Earth systems that we probably already heard of. We have the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and geosphere. So the hydrosphere is water, ice, and water vapor. Anything that has to do with water. Atmosphere is the air blanket around Earth, solid and liquid surfaces. And then we have the geosphere, which is basically the geologic fe features above and below Earth's surface, like rocks and the Earth's crust. So in this picture, we have all four systems. We have the hydrosphere, which is the water. We have the geosphere, which is the crust and the land, basically. We have atmosphere, the sky. And then in the background, there's kind of little trees there, which we could consider the biosphere. So biotic and abiotic factors interact in the biosphere, as we know. Everything interacts in life. So all four of Earth's system are interconnected. The Gigia hypothesis considers Earth as a kind of living organism. We don't have to know this is just like in-depth scientific thought or what a scientist thought of. So Earth systems interact to yield a biosphere capable of supporting life. And it was developed by James Lovelock and Lynn Margulis. Yes, and we don't have to know any of these names. So 15.2, which is climate. Climate is a key abiotic factor that affects the biosphere. So climate is basically the weather of an area that persists over a long time. So climate is the prevailing weather of a region. It's not just one day, so it's not like, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow or it rained yesterday. Climate is what the normal temperature basically. Climate is a long-term pattern of weather conditions, so it includes average temperature, precipitation, relative humidity, and key factors shape an area's climate would be the temperature, sunlight, water, and wind. So basically all the patterns of weather in the area. So a microclimate is the climate of a small specific place within a larger area, so it's basically just a climate in a smaller area. Earth has three main climate zones. The three main zones are the polar, tropical, and temperate climates. So polar climates are, as we know, the far north and far south, so the north and south pole. The tropical zone is everything surrounding the equator, and temperate zone is between the wide area in between the polar and tropical zone, so basically everything else. So here we have the two poles, the north and south pole, and their polar climates. We have the equator, which is tropical, so everything around South America and Central America. And then we have temperate, which is from this line to the poles. So temperate is just like basically average normal weather. Not too hot or not too cold. The angle of sun's rays help determine an area's climate. So as we know, the Earth is tilted as an, at an axis and we revolve around the sun, so the sun's rays hits Earth at different degrees, or hits parts of the Earth at different degrees, depending on where we are in our cycle around the sun. And this is what creates our season changes. So solar heating causes movements in both water and air, wind, ocean currents. So basically it's saying that when things are heated, they want to rise. So if the air is heated, it starts to rise. And then other air basically takes the spot of the air that rose. So, okay, let's say there's air right here where my mouse is. The sun heats it up, it rises, and then there's new, there's other air all the way, like, below it, and that just comes up, fills that spot, and then that starts to heat up, and it just, it's basically a current system. It just keeps going in circles. Earth's rotation also has an effect on wind and currents. Land masses shape inland climate, so land masses is where land is, and if there's if you're surrounded by all land, you're going to have a different climate than what you have on the coast. So larger changes in temperature and less precipitation. This is all inland. Because see, the ocean's not there to 
like make clouds when it, the water evaporates so there's going to be less precipitation and then oceans shape coastal climates smaller changes in temperature because the water has high specific heat which means it holds in a lot of heat and it's harder for water to get cold or hot very quickly so the water kind of maintains the temperature around there there's higher humidity because there's more water in the atmosphere water vapor and there's more precipitation because the water's right there to be evaporated turn into clouds mountains have an effect on climate as well so pre precipitation occurs on the side of the mountain facing the wind and on the downward side so the other side of the mountain drier and cooler air produces a rain shadow a rain shadow is an area decreased of decreased precipitation so here we have a western slope and here we have an eastern slope and by looking at the picture we can tell the western slope has snow so it has more precipitation on the eastern slope and we can tell that the wind is hitting this side of the mountain and this side has the wind shadow or the rain shadow and so the reason this occurs is because there's a mountain and when the wind blows on it or the wind is going towards the mountain it hits the mountain and it kind of gets stuck it can't go to the other side because this side of the mountain basically blocks all the wind and if there's clouds it kind of blocks the clouds a little and so they the clouds jumble up here and then they eventually precipitate on this side of the mountain and no clouds ever come on the other side because they get stopped by this face and so that's why the side with the wind and all the precipitation is more flourishing on the other side is kind of like a desert many organisms survive in a specific climate due to their adaptations so like this frog adapts to look kind of muddy or its skin color as you can see is kind of it, it well it has mud on it so you can't really tell but it's a little more browner so it can blend in with its environment so now we're talking about biomes here 5.3 key concept here is biomes are land-based global communities of organisms earth has six major biomes a biome is a major community of organisms so these are our biomes. We have a tropical rainforest, grasslands, deserts, temperate forests, taiga, and tundra. So tropical rainforest biomes produce lush forest, warm temperatures, abundant precipitation all year. So everything we basically think about when we think of rainforest. And we don't really have to know these specific biomes, but it's a good thing to know. We're probably not going to ask questions about specific biomes, but it's a good background for all their questions. So grassland, grassland biomes are where the primary plant life is grass. So the temperature grasslands are drier and warmer during the summer and most precipitation falls as snow. So we think of like the Midwest maybe. Tropical grasslands are warmer throughout the year with definitely dry and rainy season. Desert biomes are characterized by a very arid climate and so arid is basically lack of rain and hot so it's very low amounts of precipitation four types there's hot semi-arid coastal and cold we don't need to know those so deserts basically we already know that it's a desert it's hot it doesn't have rain it's dry temperate forest biomes include deciduous forests and rainforests so we probably don't know much about temperate forests and you probably don't know what deciduous is and deciduous is basically tree deciduous for, or trees are trees in which the leaves fall off so not evergreen temperate deciduous forests have hot summers and cold winters deciduous trees are the dominant plant species in a temperate deciduous forest hot summers and cold winters deciduous trees are the dominant plant species and again we don't have to know all the details about these climates these biomes the relative rainforest, the temperate rainforests have long wet seasons and relatively dry summers. Ferns and mosses cover the floors in rainforest. So the taiga biome is located in cooler northern climates. They have boreal forest, long winters and short summers, small amounts of precipitation. So basically when you think of a taiga, taiga biome, just think of this picture, these two pictures here. So like northern, maybe Canadian forest. Tundra biome is found in the far northern latitudes with long winters. We might know what a tundra is. It's kind of basically a very cold forest. 
winters last 10 months, limited precipitation, and permafrost. So it's always cold there. And then most of the animals are probably white to adapt and look like their environment so they don't get hunted. Minor biomes such as chaparral occur globally on a smaller scale. And we don't need to know that. Polar ice caps and mountains are not considered biomes. This is an important topic here. Polar ice caps have no soil, therefore no plant community. And so it, since it has no plant community, it's not considered a biome. And the climate and organisms found on mountains change as the elevation changes. So it's not basically, it's not the area, it's the height. So that's why mountains aren't considered biomes either. So that's where we're going to end today with chapter 15. We're going to finish the rest of it next time.